Hello and welcome to this CUBE Conversation. I'm Dave Vellante with the CUBE Research and we're digging into recent announcements around Dell and Red Hat. I'm here with Rob Strecce. Now, right now, I think it's safe to say that the two topics are, that are very hot um, in the community are AI infrastructure and of course, virtualization. Rob, you just had Allison Langdon on. She's the Director of Product Marketing for Multi-Cloud and Hyper-Converged Infrastructure at at Dell Technologies. Stu Miniman was back in the house. He was the Senior Director of Market Insights for hybrid platforms at, at Red Hat. You guys are on theCUBE going through some of the highlights of the announcement. Uh, I know Red Hat and Dell announced the Apex Cloud Platform with Red Hat OpenShift last year, late last year, around November, I think. Uh, and we're going to discuss what is new in this announcement. But first, I want to share some ETR data that talks to the momentum for containers. And this data is from more than 1,700 IT decision makers across 19 market sectors that ETR tracks. And that green line at 40% indicates a highly elevated spending velocity, which is on the vertical axis. And that measures what we call net score. And the horizontal axis is penetration into the data set for each sector. Now, I call your attention to MLAI. Note that since the introduction of ChatGPT, it bottomed, that was, you can see that bottom there, that's October 2022, the month before ChatGPT was announced, and it's steadily increased since then, while many other sectors, including cloud and virtualization, have decelerated, as we show here by the squiggly lines. But Rob, the container sector has held up better than other sectors in this time period. It stayed above that 40% high watermark and has come down a little bit, but why has it done so well and what does it mean in your view? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's great to see this in the data where we can actually understand that a lot of what is being built from an AI ML perspective is actually in containers. And I think people are leaning in because if you look at things like NVIDIA, the NIM software that they put out, they're all containers. And what they're doing that is for ease of use and being able to bring the portability of these models, they're containerizing those so that they can actually do governance on some of those models. So there's a lot of containers technology and Kubernetes technology being put into this AI ML. Now, like you said, it is uh, stayed above or at the 40% line, uh, that kind of money line is that, you know, as it's upticked recently, we think we've seen that another uptick in AI ML. And I think this is people trying to get to AI ML uh, really succinctly. I think another thing that you see dropping uh, recently and kind of plateauing over the last couple quarters is really virtualization. I think people are looking at how do they bring these things back together and how they're going to really be able to go back to understanding that. So down at the bottom here, you see kind of virtualization had a nosedive uh, as the announcements around Broadcom and VMware acquisitions started to transpire, but now have plateaued in the 20% range. And I, th I think, again, virtualization will never go away, uh, kind of like the mainframe, you know, software mainframe, you could, you could say, or one did say at one point in time. Uh, but I, th I think what we see here is that people are looking for a new way to approach this, especially with these brand new apps. So I think everybody's leaning into the cloud native containerized apps for these AI ML applications. Yeah, so containers is a simplifying infrastructure, even though, you know, if you want to do it yourself, it does take some skill or you got to find a partner to help you do that. But so now, Let's take a look at some other ETR data. Back in December, our partner, Enterprise Technology Research, talked to 252 organizations to try and understand how they're looking at IT purchases. They asked the question, what are the most important factors in choosing an IT vendor? And the top three reasons for choosing a solution from a technology company was number one, ease of use. It was cited by 57% of the respondents, which is notably up 9% in six months, and then 48% cited automation, and then 44% said reliability and reputation. Uh, so Rob, how does this solution address the needs, the one that's being announced by Dell and, and Red Hat, how does that address the needs of customers as they potentially look into the transition from some or part or all of their virtualization estate from VMware? Yeah, I, I think they're looking for an easy button to be able to go there. And when you start to look at where Red Hat has been very strong, Red Hat OpenShift in particular, is still deployed a lot 
on VMware. So if you start to look at that, you are already in that environment, you already know how to manage a containerized Red Hat OpenShift environment. I, I think it becomes really interesting. And this announcement with ACP, the Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat OpenShift, I think gives that easy button. In fact, it was Matt Hicks who said, hey, go build me something that I can turn on OpenShift in five minutes or less. And so time to value is really important. That ease of use, the automation, obviously Ansible is in there as, you know, as a uh, component that you can bring on. You have OpenShift AI as well as a component as we talk about that uptick in AI and ML. And you see that a lot of this easy button stuff has really been put into that. And a lot of thought has gone into the ACP underlying foundational software as well to make it easy. And this is not like a, hey, you just slap it on top. There is a lot that goes into it versus a DIY type solution. So Dell, of course, is a, a, a huge company. It's kind of become the, the everything store for tech, if you will. So we want to take a look now at Red Hat's momentum inside of Dell accounts. Uh, and so it continues to be strong, as you can see here from this data from, from ETR. Uh, ACP, as Rob just mentioned, for Red Hat OpenShift, really aims to simplify how you're running OpenShift. But Rob, take us through sort of your takeaways here. Yeah, I, I think again, if, when you start to look at how this has doubled in a year, and, and I think that that to me was the really interesting, that gray bar versus the yellow bar, where it you really have strong momentum, over 40% within these accounts of OpenShift. To me, that's things coming together in a hybrid cloud manner, because I think a lot of pieces that Dell has put in place within the Apex platform, with some of the storage announcements that they've been making about how you can go to cloud with that, where OpenShift already is, helps to build momentum for the two companies together. Uh, so what we've been seeing is that really they've been expanding a lot of the storage options that they've been doing too from the Power family or you know, with PowerStore, PowerScale and PowerFlex being integrated in, as well as part of this announcement was the fact that they brought back uh, OpenShift data as well, foundation. So the whole goal here is really to simplify how you're running you know, on-prem. So you, it's this whole notion you want to get a, you know, substantially the cloud operating model and efficiency on bare metal and you have a software you know defined infrastructure and automation you've got the full life cycle management so what specifically rob is being announced from dell and red hat what do we need to know about it yeah i, I think again I, I just kind of mentioned it and let the cat out of the bag on the storage options but i think that that is really important to people from an ease of use and from a reliability perspective is that they're looking at this and saying, hey, I want to use what I have already and join that into that because mobility of the data, especially if you're going to go and use other services in a cloud on top of the Red Hat stack. So you want to use maybe SageMaker with uh, OpenShift AI or something like that. You can do that and you can actually move that data with that entire stack underlying because of the Dell Apex uh, cloud platform solution. I think AI is definitely on the mind of everybody and they're enhancing this uh, by bringing out new Intel processors as well as the latest GPUs from NVIDIA. And I think the, one of the most intriguing capabilities that they've added in, uh, I, you know, again, I'm not surprised, is really been uh, OpenShift virtualization or OpenShift vert, which is based on the cube vert being able to bring VMs, because as we've talked about, a lot of times things don't fit nicely into a container or into a microservice architecture, so you still want to bring along. And you may have something that is already virtualized that you need to have with that application because locality of data is important. So I think that, again, what they're doing is adding all of these pieces and still claiming that it's 90% more, uh, or 90% faster time to value by going and using this ACP for Red Hat OpenShift platform versus, you know, DIY solution. Yeah, and sometimes those microservices, Rob, aren't so micro. Um, <laughs> let's talk about what's happening in virtualization and storage. Uh, it's interesting, I mean, you go back a, a decade plus and these were sort of the hot areas. And of course the ecosystem and VMware made big efforts to, to make all this stuff invisible. And I think did a pretty good job of it, but you still got to 
you still got to have run it on, on, on something. We recently published our perspective on the state of virtualization uh, in the market, and we have been discussing this at length for the past couple of weeks. We were just, Rob, at VMware Explore. What were your takeaways? What, what did we learn there, and how does it relate to this announcement? I, I think, again, it, it's perfect timing for them to put OpenShift Vert into this platform because I think there's a lot of applications. I talked to a number of customers at Explore that were having multiple different siloed stacks, I guess you could say, of here's my OpenShift stack, here's my VMware stack, different container stacks, and they were looking for a way to like shrink the number of stacks that they were actually utilizing. So bringing this together where you have not only on-prem that really VMware is maniacally focused on as Hawk talked about you know, pretty <laughs> succinctly, it, but that you can go hybrid cloud, that uh, OpenShift is in all of the major service providers today, as well as a number of CSPs and MSPs around the world. So we, I think what we learned was that there was a lot going on within that ecosystem where VMware's really focused on you know, VMware Cloud Foundation, not as much, although they, I think a good marketing aspect coming out of last week was that, you know, again, back in March, they made Kubernetes a first class citizen within vCloud Foundation. So I think there will be some, you know, co-opetition in that space when you get to that Kubernetes layer and what is the platform. Yeah, and there has been for a number of years, it's just kind of heightened right now with all the market tensions that are going on. What about use cases? Sometimes it's really helpful for customers to really understand how others are using it. What do you see as the predominant use cases here? Yeah, I, I think that we do see people turning up these new AI applications. I think, you know, leaning in in the fact that uh, it kind of seems like a perfect fit to put OpenShift AI on this platform because again, inference and being at the edge uh, really is where a lot of the inference is going to run is at that edge. So having these appliances that can grow either, uh, you know, in height and depth of storage or across with processing power, uh, really brings together some very interesting uh, AI use cases. I also think that, you know, back at Summit uh, in the, the now back in the spring, it, was, it feels like almost a year ago, but really when they talked about Red Hat and Dell and NVIDIA bringing out these blueprints for being able to do AI, I think the, you know, looking at things like digital assistance, performing speech recognition, doing that all at the edge where latency is really uh, a key and critical factor for the success. Because what we've been seeing is that you have to get the RO of AI out there and be able to, how do you get your return on AI is a really big piece of the factors that go into building these new applications. Do you see AI as just another workload? I probably shouldn't say just, but AI as a workload or is it a, an integral part of all workloads. How do you see that playing out and what does that mean for the underlying infrastructure? I think it's both. I think, I think you hit it the nail on the head. I think that this is going to be built into a lot of existing applications. Uh, in fact, we're seeing that in some of the data that we, you know, I know we go deep on all the time, where it's, is this really a part of the application or is it an application? And I think people are rethinking their applications as they rebuild them and look at how do I inject AI? What is the right AI? And do I have human in the loop? And how does that work as well? And I think that's a big piece of it is when you're, you're looking at where AI sits, a lot of times you want it to be responsive if it's a, uh, you know, a bot that's helping a customer service organization do transaction uh, processing and updating of uh, account records, for instance. I'm a bank and I want to be able to supply really quickly, hey, here's some things you may have missed in your account. You know, maybe you want to upgrade your, your bank account to this and upsell them or something like that while they're on the line quickly. That, that real function is part of other apps but is a, an enabler to that customer service agent. Rob, there's so much going on in the market. There's, there's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of tension right now, but, but things are settling down. Uh, great to see the partnership between Dell and Red Hat. A lot of information at dell.com. I called it the everything story. Pretty much anything you want in tech, you can get there. Obviously, Red Hat has some resources. And we're helping you navigate this as well. Uh, SiliconAngle.com's got all the news, the Cube research, 
If you want to go deep, and of course, thecube.net, where we host all of our video and our, and our digital TV products. Rob, thanks. Great to, ha great to have you back on, and thanks for the analysis. And thank, yeah, thank you for watching this CUBE conversation with the CUBE Research. Let us know what you think and how you're dealing with the changing market conditions. This is Dave Vellante for Rob Stretchay. We'll see you next time.